Hello and welcome to Stack News Global and to another edition of Books Corner. I'm Surya Gangadharan, and um, our guest on this edition of Books Corner is Professor Bali Deepak uh, from Jawaharlal Nehru University in Delhi. Uh, he's a well-known, uh, he teaches and researches on China at JNU, and uh, he's written a book uh, on China. It's the flavor of the season, really. And uh, it's titled um, India and China Beyond the Binary of Friendship and Enmity. Uh, clearly, it's about uh, uh, it has a fair amount of history in it, but it's also about uh, current trends, um, current developments, and that's what makes this really interesting. Uh, Bali Deepak, welcome. Yeah, my pleasure, Surya. Uh, let me get away to the um, first question. Um, what is the what is it that you're trying to convey through this book? Uh, what is the message? Uh, what is the um, view you're trying to convey? Uh, Surya, the message uh, I'm trying to convey through this book is uh, to look into the historicity, interconnectedness, and contemporaneity of India-China relations. And uh, I argue that uh, India-China relations, uh, they have to be looked uh, through these uh, uh, perspectives because most uh, uh, of the scholars, they miss on uh, the historicity of the connections uh, and also the interconnectedness of uh, the history of India and China. And then, of course, I put into contemporaneity uh, in this uh, contest. And I find uh, that uh, uh, the relationship is uh, really complex. It is really complex and uh, uh, it is difficult to put it in the binary of uh, either friendship or enmity. And that's why I have given the title beyond the friendship uh, and uh, uh, animity, you know, beyond the binary of friendship and animity. Because I think, uh, you know, that there is uh, this interconnectedness, there is uh, cooperation uh, between India and China, even during these difficult times as we are witnessing at this point in time. And mm -hmm. there is strategic rivalry and competition. And, you know, we have also witnessed conflict uh, as we have uh, seen it uh, uh, whether it is Doklam or, uh, uh, you know, last year, Galvan. And that is how I try to bring in all facets uh, into this uh, uh, book and give it a different perspective. Hmm. Now, I was going through your book and you write, it is self-evident that India and China lack mutual understanding owing to the historical baggage they carry. Are you referring to the 62 war, something even further behind? What is it? Uh, I think 62 is uh, one of uh, the components or one of the elements. Uh, if we uh, look into the history of India-China relationship, it is really a long history of 2000 uh, years. And I think in the history of 2000 years, you know, there were uh, regime changes, uh, which are not often talked about by the Indian and Chinese scholars. Indian scholars, because I think they don't have access to the Chinese sources or they lack Chinese expertise to go into these sources. And they just talk about maybe uh, these being benign or uh, sort of like everything was honky-dory between India and China. Uh, and that's what our leadership has also given this perspective you know, so to our uh, populations. But I look beyond that and I, I, I uh, evaluate these uh, documents uh, uh, critically and bring in these unhappy incidents, you know, also into that. And 62 is just uh, one of uh, the, uh, the, the, you can say, historical baggage. But I think uh, uh, what uh, I try to argue in this uh, book, uh, in, in some of the chapters, maybe more clearly at the end of the book, uh, which is uh, uh, the Galvan and the post-COVID uh, uh, relationship, I, I, I think uh, uh, what we uh, are uh, today are the kind of uh, uh, you know understanding or other misunderstanding we are in 
or the so-called you know uh, disequilibrium we are uh, finding in our relationship uh, i have uh, argued that it is primarily you know the due to a couple of factors and the main reason behind uh, uh, this misunderstanding and uh, this equilibrium uh, between india and china is that uh, you know uh, uh, the balance of power has uh, shifted in favor of china and it is this uh, balance of power which is reflected in uh, you know the five times larger gdp of china is technological uh, progress uh, you know uh, whereby it has bridged its gap with the united states or the west and our asymmetric relationship with china has further widened i also mm-hmm. argue that uh, you know it was almost uh, uh, you know if we go back to three decades because we were at the same level of development india yeah. and china yeah. if we uh, if we if we look at the comprehensive national strength even in 1991 when i went to china for the first time we were almost at par it is only in the last uh, 20 years or so or rather i will say the last decade you know from 2010 to 2020 has been instrumental and 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 then this gap between india and china it has widened uh, you know further so yeah. these uh, this understanding it has been uh, lost and i think china sees no compulsion uh, mm. to, uh, to 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 agree by india or to maintain so called peace and tranquility along the border or maybe you know understanding on various issues whether it is nsg whether it is you know uh, uh, issues related to terrorism so on and so on and so forth so therefore i think we have to uh, look into that and uh, and then which is uh, exactly how i have uh, argued mm-hmm. in some of the chapters in the book interesting uh, i have a point here that you have um, uh, written uh, i like to quote it um, china seeks parity for smaller nations with india uh, would you explain how does that happen how does that work i think that is exactly the problem you know uh, of how uh, china looks at india you know, because one uh, it is uh, not there at uh, uh, you know the uh, the priority i would say uh, as far as its diplomacy is concerned we are very low in china's priority uh, mm-hmm. and it's only a uh, of late when uh, maybe these uh, geopolitical contours are uh, taking uh, you know new shape uh, when our uh, proximity with the west especially united states is increasing that china has uh, you know slightly tried to pay uh, attention to india uh, otherwise uh, you know it has uh, uh, projected india uh, as uh, a very very chaotic uh, nation Uh, mm-hmm. very very you can say a messed up a democracy uh, uh, where you know uh, we have a lot of problems as far as religion is concerned and i think uh, this uh, perspective or these uh, perception of images it is directly you know linked to uh, how china perceived india rather british india uh, during uh, Uh, you can say uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the raj time you know and these images they were built during those time and that's why i think you know this historicity is important because it is uh, related to uh, british india's uh, expeditions in tibet and elsewhere in asia and chinese sending their uh, uh, officials to find out investigate you know what are uh, how are things in india and how Uh, british india is uh, it, it, it behaving and in some of the writings so they 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 uh, they they, they uh, uh, pronounce that you know british india that they would like to subjugate uh, tibet you know so they would like to make it into a protectorate and when mm-hmm. india inherits these privileges so they are connected by china with this history so this is also one of the baggage you were talking mm-hmm. or referring to 1962 so 1962 mm-hmm. is just and element you know but there is more yeah. beyond uh, 1962 and coming mm-hmm. back to you know why it, it uh, is not rating india very high rather it seeks 
parity you know for smaller nation especially uh, is uh, pivot state pakistan, pakistan so whether yeah. it is yeah whether it is uh, uh, you know uh, supplying it with uh, nuclear weapons or military technology or whether it is you know bringing it on board is uh, a project of the century the belt and road initiative yeah, cpac yeah. you know it is the flagship of the uh, of, of of the program and you know uh, whether it is nsg or you know various other issues related mm -hmm. to united nations security council so china yeah. tried to 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 you know seek parity for pakistan uh, with india rather than you know de-hyphening this relationship so therefore mm -hmm. i don't think you know, we would uh, we would see any de-hyphenation uh, as far mm -hmm. as uh, india pakistan mm -hmm. and china now despite that you also write India does not think big of China. This is something we have discussed before. Uh, it's a, a comment you made in China, I recall, uh, during some academic... Uh, can you explain this? Seminar. Uh, I think uh, this is, again, uh, you know, related to uh, history. Uh, for example, uh, for China, especially since uh, Opium Wars, I would say, you know, so it was... Uh, 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 it, it, it was uh, busy fighting uh, uh, foreign aggression and domestic rebellion uh, right up to uh, 1949, I would say. You know, so that's why a century of humiliation. Sometimes, of course, I think this notion, century of humiliation, it rather blown up or China trying to portray itself as a victim of uh, you know, foreign aggression or imperialism, yeah. if you may call it. So that is, uh, you know, uh, one aspect. Of, aspect. I think more uh, uh, importantly, it, it is uh, uh, the you can say industrialization, or uh, uh, or or you can say uh, other parameters. Whether you take railways or you take you know uh, other transportation system, highways, or you take uh, take take heavy industries. So to be uh, very frank, some of the Chinese scholars or themselves, so they have argued that India was far better, you know, in terms of uh, uh, industrialization before uh, the establishment of uh, People's Republic of China in 1949. So that is one aspect. And second aspect is that uh, India, uh, you know, has better institutions, whether you, 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 you talk about independent judiciary, whether you talk about financial system, are you know working democracy executive? Yeah. Uh, so China doesn't have these uh, these things. And whether you talk about education, and I think more importantly, it is also related to the history because uh, India in the past, you know, two thousand years, it uh, offered China much more than what China offered us. You know, yeah. it was under the um, under the umbrella of Buddhism that. Uh, you know, uh, be uh, be offered them or or, or India's uh, astronomy, India's literature, India's art, India's culture, and various you know uh, uh, you know forms of literary forms from India. So they entered mm -hmm. uh, China, including language. The Chinese language presently no one knows. Uh, it uh, in India also many do not know in China. Yeah, you would be yeah. surprised that, that there are thirty-five thousand vocabularies of Indian origin in present-day Chinese. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think this spiritual superiority, uh, you know, uh, and and of course it we we, we have to go back uh, in the history. It is all these factors that uh, we. Uh, you know, in India, most many Indians, so or, or in, even some of the Chinese, they believe why India doesn't think big of China. It is because of these very reasons. Because in the history, it was you know so-called spiritual guru of China, and 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 then even after independence, you know, many of our uh, parameters, development parameters, they were indeed better than uh, China. In fact, mm -hmm. of course, the credit goes to British, the railways. You know, we started to build in yeah, 1853, yeah. whereas China, so they started to build it, you know, a couple years later. But mm -hmm. now the situation is totally uh, different. You know. Well, clearly both sides carry a lot of baggage. Huh? Now, I want to come uh, to yes. this whole thing about um, China's victim psychology and how that is used to justify the manner in which it goes about, you know, muscle flexing in the South China Sea, Ladakh and elsewhere. Is this really driven by victim psychology? 
Uh, I think to some extent, uh, yes, you know, uh, uh, because uh, so China has always uh, argued that uh, it has suffered uh, a lot, uh, whether uh, it is uh, the British or the Americans or the French uh, or the Japanese. You, you count it right from 1814, you know, from yeah. opium wars with the British and then uh, 1875 wars with the French, and then 1894-95 uh, with the Japanese, and then uh, even the Russians, they, 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 they come in. It is sort of like cutting the Chinese watermelon. Yeah. And in 1901, we see this Boxer Rebellion and you know yeah, uh, uh, many nations coming together and uh, uh, pounding China. So this mentality, it uh, is still that. And, uh, and then we can see, uh, you know, uh, its demonstration or its reflections uh, when a whole lot of Western countries, including some organizations in India, asking for, in, uh, for, for uh, uh, investing, investigating the coronavirus mm -hmm. origin. Uh, you know, yeah. this, in this uh, context, China is very, very, uh, you know, vehement and uh, uh, opposing the whole notion that, no, you know, so China is very different. It is yeah. uh, not uh, the, the China of 1901. It is China of uh, uh, you know 2020, and, uh, uh, and and it accounts for 17, 18 percent of the world GDP. It is the second largest economy in the world. It has made huge uh, you know ways, uh, headways in artificial uh, intelligence, quantum computing, so on and so forth. So we are not going to sit back. In fact, uh, I would say that this tendency you know of assertiveness uh, it didn't start in 2020 i would say that it started somewhere 2007 2008 in fact 2007 i uh, published a book on china's uh, agrarian policies uh, and it is uh, there when the, the 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 it is during this period in time when the notion of peaceful rise of china was you know mm -hmm. gaining traction and china saying that you know, it will not be moot spectator to, to international affairs as it has been. It will take mm -hmm. a proactive, uh, proactive stance. And I think since then, 2007 onward, and of course, the, the Olympic was the benchmark. Yeah, and yeah, after yeah. that, especially yeah. since uh, 2012, when President Xi Jinping, you know, took over the reins of governance. So it has taken a totally a different uh, mm -hmm. position and, and, and we can translate into the wolf warrior diplomacy of China. But the victim psychology hasn't gone. It's still there. It, yeah, it is so, still there. Yeah. Now, last question, uh, Professor Deepak. So when we look ahead, it seems we are going to be locked in a cycle of confrontation. Uh, does that presage conflict? What is your sense of where we are going? Uh, I think this is an uh, extremely difficult question you know, to answer. I really don't know what will happen uh, uh, tomorrow, but I think we have uh, 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 all the uh, parameters you know, which indicates that uh, it is not going to be an easy uh, relationship uh, to handle with, uh, especially you know, our uh, close proximity uh, with the United States, uh, China seriously believe that uh, we are there with the Western camp uh, mm. or with the United States to contain China's rise. And uh, uh, this is one thing. And I think uh, uh, China's uh, uh, resentment you know, towards this proximity has been uh, demonstrated or I'm mirrored doing, yeah. in various, very, 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 various posturings uh, uh, be it uh, Article 370, uh, you know, uh, be it uh, 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 the clashes along the borders, uh, or, or, or many, uh, you know, uh, other things. Uh, uh, I, I, I can name uh, a few more. You know, but then mm -hmm. I think uh, 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 the, the the kind of relationship we envisage it for India and China, I would argue that uh, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, how difficult it is to handle. We have to engage with the, each other, uh, you know, pragmatically. So I, 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 I say it should be constructive pragmatism 
uh, as far as uh, handling India-China relationship is concerned. But of course, uh, I think bringing back that lost equilibrium and understanding, understanding, ending, it will also depend on how we shape or reshape our uh, relationship with major powers, including Russia, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and also the middle powers like uh, France, uh, uh, Germany, or uh, uh, Japan, and even the United Kingdom, and also the neighborhood, uh, which is extremely important, uh, you yeah. know, because yeah. China's uh, inroads in the neighbor neighborhood, they are massive, and of course, they uh, are uh, looking at China as an opportunity. But I think for us, China could also be an opportunity, uh, yeah. you know, along with the challenge or dilemma, but we need to really see how we can, uh, we, we, we can encash on that. I think as far as manufacturing, uh, Chinese manufacturing is concerned, if uh, investment in this sector, especially the localization, you know, of the manufacturing is, uh, uh, it is uh, to be uh, to be in, to be in, in, in invited. That should be a, a welcome, uh, you know, step uh, yeah, uh, in, yeah, in, in the Indian yeah. government. But more importantly, I think the last point I would like to say that it will also depend out. It will also depend uh, depend on how quickly India's economic growth it gains traction. If it yeah. doesn't gain traction, and China will still look down upon us. And also, uh, it will also depend on uh, how we handle our domestic challenges. You know, we should uh, be, uh, be, be, be uniting people uh, against external challenges. So it will also depend how we handle these domestic and external challenges altogether. And then mm -hmm. I think even if there are asymmetries in relationship with China, so maybe we would be able to, you know, find some uh, middle way to handle our relationship with China. Fascinating. I think um, there's a lot of baggage in the relationship and um, the economic asymmetries don't help. But uh, nevertheless, uh, since China is a neighbor and you've got to live with your neighbors, uh, we'll have to engage in some way or the other. Bali Deepak, congratulations on your book. I'm reading it from back to front because I'm a journalist and I enjoy the contemporary uh, flavor. Uh, but uh, the historical part of it is uh, something which uh, is also interesting. I was a student of history. Uh, so great, re great reading, um, uh, Bali Deepak. Congratulations again. And thank you very much. Pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Surya. Pleasure talking.